Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Candace. Today we are continuing on in our Keepers at Home series, which is referencing Titus chapter two. We're talking about the qualities, you know, that as a wife or as a woman that we are to cultivate. And today we're talking about discretion or being discreet, which in and of itself is a big quality that can protect our families, it can protect our children, husbands, yourself. Like we're gonna dive deep into all of those areas. But first, of course, I'm gonna pray for this video and then we will dive right in. God, thank you so much for making us to be super relational creatures as women and for giving us discernment and wisdom and for showing us what you want us to do when it comes to our actions and our words and for giving us the responsibilities of caring for families, extended families, husbands, children, you know, friends, all of the people that you've connected us to. I ask that you would bring anybody to this video who you would like to hear it and that if they can hear me right now that they would know it, it was you that sent them, not me. I ask that you would give us all a blessed week in Jesus Christ's name. All right, so like I said, Titus 2. If you don't have your Bible, go ahead and pull it out or Bible app. I mean, there's so many different ways to look at the Bible these days. Pick one and take a look. It's Titus chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 3. In this chapter, it also talks about things that the men should be doing and qualities that they should be developing. But since I am a woman, I am focusing on the qualities that women should be developing, okay? Now, in verse 3, it says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So that word discreet, that is what we are going to be focusing on today. And I feel like God's really put this on my heart lately just because we are in a society these days where discretion almost has been thrown out the window. Like people air all of their dirty laundry online. Um, a lot of people are posting a lot of things that are embarrassing or, you know, detrimental to other people's relationships and things like that online. And, or even just, you know, in person gossiping about all the other people we know and saying really not discreet things which then end up harming relationships and all family and all these things. And so it's, I think it's something that needs to be talked about. Now, the word discreet in that particular verse, if you look at the concordance, I use the strong concordance, um, the word, it's number 4998 in the Greek. And it's sophron or something like that. Don't ask me about the pronunciation. It's S-O-P-H-R-O-N. And it means to be safe or sound in mind, self-controlled, moderate as to opinion and passion, discreet, sober, and temperate. Right? So if you actually look up discreet in like an actual dictionary, I've got a really old school one here. It says... To separate, distinguish between discern, characterized by discernment as to what is expedient, expedient. So in other words, as to what is good for you, right? Exercising or showing a wise control over one's actions or speech. And it also talks about being civil or polite, right? And I think it's important the uh, the wise. What does that say? <laughs> the wise control over our actions and our speech. I think this particular verse, uh, it was Paul writing this, right? I think he specifically put discreet as one of the character descriptors for women because let's face it, as women, we tend to be the more relational creatures. We talked about that in the Masculinity and Femininity series with Adam and Eve. I'll link it down below because for some reason the links up here just are having issues with me on YouTube, so I'll link any videos or anything I mentioned scripture-wise and stuff like that down below in the description box. But as women, we are the more la relational creatures. We talk probably a good deal more than a lot of the men do, 
let's face it, especially when we get around other groups of women that we are very comfortable around. I mean, those conversations can go zero to 60 and there's like no boundaries half the time in what people are saying or what they're talking about, how they're talking about other people. You know what I mean? And then of course you add in social media and online presences and, you know, trying to get likes and comments and things like that. And it's taken like our level of, you know, TMI, too much information, like to the next level of insanity. But in regards to the different areas of our life in which we can use discretion, right? to protect our loved ones, to protect the people that are important to us, to protect those around us. I'm going to break this down into a few parts. We're going to talk about husbands first, because this verse was specifically talking about, you know, wives. So we're going to talk about husbands first. And if you're single, like I am, you know, hey, use this knowledge and store it up so you can use it later on if you do get married, right? Uh, We're going to talk about husbands. We're going to talk about in regards to children, right? And again, you don't have to be a mom for that to apply to you. If you have any kids in your lives, nieces, nephews, whatever else, cousins, it'll apply. And then we're going to talk about our own selves, okay? We're going to start with husbands first, like I said. So when it comes to men, right, we are the more relational creatures. I've said that. We usually get our value from the quality of the relationships that we have around us, right? or I'm so-and-so's mom, I'm so-and-so's wife, I'm so-and-so's cousin, or so-and-so's daughter, right? We tend to place a good deal of value as women on our relationships. Men, however, and men, if you are watching this, I would like you to go down below in the comments. If you think I'm speaking truth, if you think there's something you want to add, go ahead and throw it down there, okay? I'd love to hear from you guys too, and I think any women who are listening to this channel would love to hear your opinions. But men, however, very much get a lot of their self-worth from their accomplishments, from their purpose in life, from what God leads them to do, from protecting, from providing. And so their, shall we say, (laughs) their mindset, right, is very much valued with those things and connected to those things in a different way than it is for women, right? Because most of us, as women, like, our whole self-worth and value isn't put in our jobs, usually, or into, you know, how much money we're making and things like that, or the things we're accomplishing. It's usually placed in our relationships, right? So when it comes to husbands, how we view them and how we speak about them to other people is exceptionally important. Like I said, having control over your actions and your speech, right? If you think about it this way, in Proverbs 31, it's talking about the wise woman, right? It says now her husband is respected in the gates. He's in the gates, you know, sitting in the gates as one of the elders. Like, he's respected. He's well known as being a good guy, right? And for him to have gotten that far, his wife obviously is using discretion. She is speaking wisely about him to other people, she is lifting him up instead of tearing him down. Now, a personal example of this, um, I knew a couple who were probably married about six months at this point, so again, they were new to marriage, they were still figuring things out. Um, They had come and they were talking to, there were like three or four of us women standing there, right? And this couple, apparently the day before, she had told him that the knob on the stove wasn't working correctly, right? It wasn't turning the way it was supposed to, or whatever the case was. And so he, of course, being the protector, being the provider, stepped up and tried to fix the problem, right? He tried to solve it. Ultimately, though, he ended up breaking the knob on the stove. Which happens, you know, men are human just as much as we women are. We don't get everything perfect either, right? But (laughs) the thing was, instead of kind of keeping that information to herself or keeping that story to herself, she started telling it to those of us who were listening to her with her husband standing right next to her, right? 
and I know she meant well, like she did not mean to be disrespectful, she did not mean to kind of, you know, put him down in a way, but as she was telling this story, she's kind of, you know, playing it off and laughing it off as, oh, you know, he just kind of manhandled the stove and it broke, so now we gotta get a new knob, blah, blah, blah. And so she didn't actually mean it in a harmful way. You could tell she was using the story to connect with us as the other women, like as a relational thing, right? But watching her husband's face, he went from being, you know, happy, pleasant, talking to us, and as she continued her story, his face just fell. And I was like, oh no, she doesn't know what she's doing right now. She doesn't know how what she's saying is affecting him. Because if you think about it from his point of view, again, men, check me on this, his point of view, as a man, is that his worth, again, is connected to his accomplishments, is connected to protecting, providing for, you know, doing God's purpose in his life. And so for him, having perceived, like, failure with the knob, that's like a point of touchy, touchiness in the ego, if you will. And for that failure to then be talked about and put out there for everyone else to hear about, I can imagine was not very pleasant for him, right? He did not seem to be enjoying that conversation at all because in a way it came off as disrespectful. I'm sure she didn't mean it that way, right? But because her putting out a failure of his, she wasn't building him up with her words, right? She was tearing him down with her words, even though I don't think she understood that she was doing that at the time. And I've seen this with a lot of couples, you know, a woman will say a story thinking it's funny, but ultimately it's really putting her husband down or putting the men in her life down. And as a woman, okay, if you've done this and you don't see it as that problematic, let me flip the script for you and ask you if you would have a problem with it this way. If you decided, let's say you're not a very good cook, right? If you decided to go out of your way to make a home-cooked meal for your husband and you did out all the stops, right? You tried to make it fancy, make it romantic, and yet some of the things you made ended up being a little undercooked, some things made up have been a little overcooked, but overall you put your heart and soul into that meal and gave it to your man, right? And then the next day you guys, you think it goes well, right? The next day you go to church and your man then starts making fun of you, saying, oh yeah, she tried cooking for me, but it ended up burnt, half of it taste bitter. Ugh, I really need to send her to some cooking classes or something. You would not be okay with that, right? <laughs> it's the same way but with men, we tend to think that men are tougher, that they can handle teasing more and stuff like that, but ultimately the teasing and the things like that is disrespectful. And so had she chosen to be more discreet in that moment, had she chosen to just not talk about the knob at all and maybe talk about something else or casually just say, yeah, we're working on our kitchen, you know, we need to fix this and that, no big deal, you know. <laughs> Or she could have played it off in a way that, yeah, my husband really tried, he is doing his best, we're fixing it and trying to figure out what's going on, you know? Like, there are other ways that she could have talked about it without seeming to put him down, right? And more discretion is important. You might say, oh, well, what's the point, okay? He had hurt feelings for a day, whatever. The point is, okay, we as women have a lot of power, especially in our words because we are relational, right? So the way you speak about your husband, the way you speak about your family, the way you speak about yourself, is going to influence the way other people see your husband, the way other people see your children, the way other people see you. If you say something mocking or teasing about your husband in front of his boss, his boss is then gonna realize that you have no respect for your husband, and so his boss might end up having less respect for him. You get what I'm saying? Like, it does have a domino effect on the people that you're talking to. And it changes their perception of the person that you're talking about, if that makes sense. Now, in Proverbs, it says, you know, Proverbs, where are we at? 
Proverbs has a lot of thing about a lot of little tidbits about women in it. So if you're looking for some extra wisdom, take a peek through Proverbs. But Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1 says, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. In other words, you know, we're building marriages, we're building relationships. And to build them up, you need to put in good things, good words, good actions, right? To build them and make them solid. If you're wise, you're going to be putting in the effort to build your husband up. You're going to be putting in the effort to build your relationship and your trust together, right? If you're wise, you are going to be building that relationship with discretion from the outside world. That way, other people don't see your husband's failures. Because let's face it, we as wives are going to fail too, and husbands are going to fail. We're human, right? God has infinite grace for that, but we are human. We are going to fail. And if you would not want your own failures spoken about by your husband to every which other person, right, because that would disintegrate the trust between the two of you, then you should also should not be talking about your husband's perceived failures to everybody else. Being discreet about that protects your relationship, protects the trust between the two of you, protects him, protects his reputation, and protects you as well in that relationship, right? Because you want to build that relationship up, not tear it down. That's the point. Uh, also in Proverbs, a few other good ones here that I was just flipping across. Proverbs 11, 22 as a jewel of gold in a swine's snout. So is a fair woman which is without discretion, right? Discretion is another form of being, is just another word for being discreet, right? If you are not discreet at all, and you just, you know, blab everything out there, talk about everything out there, or, you know, it talks about actions too. You could be better with your words, but you might be posting pictures of yourself drunk or half naked online. Those again are also not discreet. But the thing is, as useless as it is to have a piece of jewelry in a pig's nose, is as, as useless as a woman is if you are, doesn't matter how beautiful you are, if you're not discreet, you're not going to be building good relationships, you're not going to be building a good life, right? That's what it means. Uh, also, if you look at chapter 12, verse 4, it says, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Yikes, right? That, when I think about that story, even though she didn't know that she was shaming her husband publicly, the fact of the matter was that she was. She didn't understand it. I mean, she was newly married. She didn't understand it. And I'm sure she's probably learned about that by now. But when you are shaming another person, intentionally or unintentionally, you are then, you know, rottening his bones you are making him not trust in you and if he doesn't trust you he's not going to open up to you right you want and that sort of relationship you want trust you want openness right you want emotional emotional vulnerability and the only way to protect those things and give them a safe environment to thrive is to make sure that you have discretion so you keep the private things private right you know the not so private things great, whatever, talk about them, but the private things, keep them protected, right? And that's what it means by being discreet. All right, moving on. Talking about kids. <laughs> now this one, doesn't matter if you have kids or you're just an influence in the life of a child here or there or a whole bunch, this will apply to all of you, <laughs> right? Let's face it, in this day and age, and in all day and ages, there are predators out there. There are creeps out there whose entire goal is to destroy and mess up your children, right? Now, I've seen a lot, especially Christian content makers. There's a lot of secular ones too, but I'm talking to you guys who know God who you have a relationship with God, right? This is important. If you especially are a content creator of some sort and you are featuring your children in the videos, in the photos, in the TikToks, in the whatever else it is that you're doing, it's not very discreet. 
let's face it, I talked about this in the modesty in social media video, I'll link that down below too. Um, I talked about this there, it's the fact that of the matter is, you know, when I was growing up, my embarrassing home videos, my embarrassing photographs were kept in a photo album or in a drawer in my own home where I had the control of who saw those things, right? And in that sort of way, it's fun to have cheeky photos or to have cheeky little videos. What's not okay about it is being indiscreet by blasting it to the world. And I know, again, a lot of you are going to be like, well, it's innocent. It's all an innocent fun. Let's talk about some of the repercussions of this. Think of your son or your daughter or the child that you have influence over. When that son turns into a man, when that daughter turns into a woman, when she goes for a job or is they're up her, for a promotion at a job, right? And all of a sudden that video of them when they were six and they were half naked and saying embarrassing things posted online resurfaces because you know these things don't go away resurfaces and their boss sees it do you think they're gonna get the promotion do you think it's gonna go over well like there are a lot of people posting videos of their toddlers on the toilet. Which is like, if there was a definition of indiscreet in a picture, it would be that. <laughs> like, I have seen a lot of Christian mothers post pictures online on social media platforms of their five or six year old daughter in nothing but a pair of underwear. There are a lot of creeps out there. And if you give them access to personal information about your child or any children that you were involved with or have any influence over none whatsoever, like, they're going to take that and run with it. That picture of that six-year-old girl who is in her underwear, some middle-aged man somewhere, could be, you know, mm -mm, while looking at it. Do you really want your daughter or your son exposed to that? Is it safe for your child to be exposed to that? I mean, seriously, especially posting their names, posting their ages, posting where they go to school, or talking about where you live. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who have very ill intentions, very evil intentions. And I'm not saying to be paranoid about everyone out there, but as someone who is influencing a child in some way, it is your job as the adult to protect them. It is your job to stand between them and the creepy people out there. And if they, you know, as children, okay, we tell children, don't talk to strangers. But how is it, how does a five-year-old or a ten-year-old discern who is a stranger? How do they know who is a stranger versus who isn't? Usually, they would think, okay, this person doesn't know my name, this person doesn't know my parents, this person doesn't know where I live or how old I am, they're obviously a stranger. But what if that person comes up to them, says, oh, hey, Ava, I'm so glad you had your, fi your fifth grade graduation recently. Hey, I know your mom and your dad, so Kim and Bob, uh, can you show me where they're at? Because I really need to talk to them. Do you think a child is going to know that that person is a stranger if they have all this personal information about them? Like, they're not gonna know. It's not safe, guys, to put personal information about your children online. It's not. And you may be looking at me and be like, okay, well, I don't do that. I don't post information about my kids online. Okay, are you also the person who is putting, have you guys seen those signs? The signs that people put like in their yard now, like, oh, picture of my child, name of my child, they just graduated this grade from this school. In the front yard. Those are equally as problematic and indiscreet. Because, okay, now this creep who's driving by your house knows that there is a fifth grader named Ava who lives at this address. And oh, look, I know exactly what she looks like so I can go spot her at her school and say, hey, yeah, your parents sent me. 
I'm just saying. Being discreet, especially when it comes to children, is important. <laughs> especially when people are just blasting everything online and it is so just not safe. It's not it's not good for their, you know, futures to have all of these embarrassing things about them at public view at a moment's notice, you know what I mean? Like, it's our job to protect them, it is our job to make sure that they are happy and whole and healthy and that they stay safe. Like, that's the job that God gave us as adults who are in children's lives. To help them stay safe. To help guide them along the path of righteousness, to help expose them to God and to healthy people and to healthy relationships and stuff like that. So I think it's very, very, very important to be discreet when it comes to children. And for those um, people who are creeping on children, you know what Jesus says about that. Luke chapter 17. Like, for those, again, who are messing with children, God is very much not okay with that in any way, shape, or form. Jesus himself says... Luke chapter 17, verse 2. It's also, I think, a couple times in the other Gospels. It says, it were, it were better for him that a millstone, which is a giant grinding stone, like giant heavy stone, right? Were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Like God's got a special form of punishment for these people if they don't repent and change their ways. Like, that's how serious he is about protecting the kids, guys. All right. Moving on to ourselves, right? Our own selves. Like, when I was in college, right? Doesn't matter really what job you're going for. In college, they sit you down at some point and they tell you, hey, I want you to take a look at your social media. If there's anything on there that's questionable, you should probably remove it now. <laughs> like, before you go out for job interviews and things like that, right? They tell you that you need to watch your reputation, that you need to be discreet, especially in the things you post online, because if you're going for a job or you want to get married someday, right? Or, you know, whatever relationship, you're going to be an elder at your church or blah, blah, blah. All of these things are affected the outcomes of them are affected by your reputation, right? By my reputation. My reputation affects the outcome of what I'm doing. And our reputations, people can get an insight into who we are, right? By what we post online and what we post on social media or the things that we say in groups of people about ourselves. If you're talking down about yourself all the time or if you're more upbeat about yourself, if you're to the point of being super arrogant about yourself, you know, flashing your accomplishments all the time. Like, again, all of these things make up the reputation that you have. And so it is important for us to be discreet in these areas, too, because it protects ourselves, right? Like, in the college thing, they were like, okay, if you have pictures of yourself holding, you know, alcoholic beverages, probably smart to delete those. <laughs> like, if you have pictures of yourself in a bikini online, it's probably smart to delete those in case a future employer tends to look you up and finds these things. You know, if you have pictures of yourself that are just indiscreet or videos where you're saying things that are super out there, shall we say, in one way or another, or they're rude things, or it's a video of you cussing at somebody, or, you know, whatever the case may be, you guys know what's, you know, appropriate to be out there and what would make a good reputation for you versus what is going to make your reputation bad, right? And this is what discretion is all about. Discretion is a form of protection, right? It is a form of wisdom. It is a form of discernment. It is a form of, you know, just being wise in ourselves and in our relationships and in our surroundings, it is a way we protect ourselves. We protect the people around us, right? By being discreet. By thinking about the things that we post online before we post them online. By thinking about what we're gonna say before we say it. 
by checking ourselves if we're about to say something that might be damaging to another person's reputation, right? By checking ourselves before we reveal personal information about somebody else that they maybe don't want us to reveal. You know, just checking ourselves and pulling our tongue back a little bit. And just thinking about, okay, if I say this, or if I post this, or if I do this, how is it going to affect other people around me? Right? Not just yourself, but how is it going to affect the people around you? How is it going to, you know, be good for them or be bad for them or somewhere in between? Of course, we want to err on the things that are going to end up being good for other people and are going to lift other people up. I mean, oh, our tongue is like a double-edged sword. Our tongue can be used for both good and for evil, right? We can use our tongue to be really horrible to people and ruin their reputations, or we can be as the wise woman in Proverbs and build up our own houses, build up our relationships, build up our friendships, build up other people's, you know, confidence in themselves, and build up their reputation, and make them seem, you know, point out the good things in them, instead of focusing on the bad, right? We have power, and that's really what I wanted to say with this video, is that we have the power to influence other people, for good or for bad, right? And the way to do it the best way, to be good for other people, especially those closest to us, family, friends, kids, <laughs> husbands, you know, is to be discreet, is to just think about what we say before we say it and be wise about it, or think about what we post before we post it and be wise about it. I think that's about all I have to say on this video today, guys. If you have any comments or any questions or whatever else, or any other examples you want to throw out of these things, go ahead and throw them down in the comments. I read all the comments and approve them before they go up, just so you know. But I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.